Welcome to the Relationship Revivalist Podcast. This is John, and I am here, like always, every single week with my amazing and beautiful wife, Jess. Oh, thanks, John. Well, you are so welcome, and you are so awesome. I I love you so much. You are, too, and I love you so much. So, we wanted to talk to our audience about a, a thing that... Well, the title might have really pulled you in on this when... You really think, well, can I really change my spouse? And, and to be honest, we were really hoping that it would pull you in so you'd give a listen. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so let's talk about how can you change your spouse? Because, we're, I mean, that's why you're listening, right? So mm-hmm. here's a couple of ways that you could probably try and change your spouse or your partner, which wh- whatever situation you're in. Um, I would now, John, say. John, are these ways that we think will work, or we're not sure? If I'm just work? throwing them out there right now, just okay. because you know I, I have yet to hear something valid where it actually changes somebody and it, it changes them for the better, or in your opinion, I guess, the partner's opinion. And I think that when you are uh, looking for ways to change your partner, I mean, it, it's worth taking a shot, right? So, getting on to that, I'd say. One of the first things you can do is start to manipulate people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Um, mani- ma- manipulation and uh, telling stories, telling lies about them. Uh, see, I, I, I don't know how much longer I could go on this because all these things that I, I would come up with really don't work. Right, they don't work. And you are kind of sound like um, narcissism right then, like you were describing oh, that. We just went over that, I know. Didn't we? <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Yeah, manipulation um, really doesn't work. And I, I think if people were honest with themselves and, and if they actually tried that, they would probably agree that it really doesn't work, at least not for the long term. Because once, you're, once your partner is wise to your wiles... <laughs> Of manipulation, they're Definitely. usually like, uh, wait a minute, uh, no, that's a no-go. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, so, you don't want to have any of those manipulation woes. I mean, come on, You've, we, we live in a, in, a, in a time now where people pick up on things really fast and we have social media and then people can tell other people about certain people that manipulate mm-hmm. and things spread too fast, so... We have to be on the up and up. We have to be morally grounded. And I, I'm I'm taking a wild stab in the dark here that if you're listening, you are a person of faith. And, you know, if you're a person of faith, you already know that being morally sound is one of those things that God teaches us. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the funny thing is, uh, Jesus, he was a smart man. Yes, <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree, John. <laughs> and I say this because the topic, I mean, we said, how do you change your partner? And really, the only way to change your partner is to change yourself. Spoiler alert. Brilliant. <laughs> you know how Jesus said, you know, you should start to um, take that plank out of your own eye before you can even see the speck that's in your neighbor's eye. Ouch. Ouch. And, you know, if you take that speck out then, or that plank out, then you can actually see the speck in your neighbor's eye. So Jesus was talking about people actually improving themselves instead of worrying about others. And that, to me, says, hey, we've got a lot of mindset issues that need to be taken care of. And if you can get rid of those mindset issues, then maybe you can go and help your neighbors with their mindset issue. so Yeah, and something I love about those verses in um, Matthew, Matthew 7, 3, when Jesus is actually talking to people and using that analogy of a plank in your own eye, just think about like a whole piece of board, you know, a plank yeah. in your eye and a sliver or a speck in your neighbor's eye. It's just the the um, examples are, it's kind of funny. I think, I think it was kind of tongue in cheek. I think he might've been giggling on the inside. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, just, (laughs) he must've had a good sense of humor too, because, because to talk about the two like vast differences, you know, and, and assuming that we have a plank in our own eye and you know what I also, if we have a plank in our own eye and that's all we can see, we might project that plank onto our partner 
and think, oh my gosh, they have such a problem with blah, blah, blah. And it's really us who has the problem. We think they have the plank in their eye, but all we can see is our own plank. Isn't that crazy how, you know, this plank, I'm guessing this plank must have had some sort of a, a property where it, it would let you see through the, the plank. And, you know, kind of like Star Wars or Star Trek kind of thing, you know, like you can just see through it because, you know, you are who you are. And you're like, well, I know better. And so you must have the plank in your, your eye, not me having the plank in my <laughs> eye because, you know, certain little powers that I have, you know, I can see these things, you know. Uh, but, you know, when, you, when it comes right down to it, your... Um, the plank that we're talking about uh, has to be dealt with. Um, and you know, plank, it's funny that Jesus would even say it's a plank because he doesn't, it doesn't say that, oh, it's an issue. Oh, it's a mindset thing. Oh, it's uh, uh, some sort of a, a mental block or what have you. He just calls it a plank. And what is a plank? It's just a, a board. And it's so plain, plain and ordinary. And it also fills up the vision of the person who has it in their eye. And if you think about it, it's like impossible to have a whole plank in your eye. Your eye socket's is not big enough for that. Isn't and that so like, it's just like he used this huge hyperbole kind of grandiose, you know, yeah. idea. Um, and I think it, I think he really meant it to be kind of funny too, because it's like, it's kind of ridiculous that it you is. have that much, you know, you know, some, sometimes you get something in your eye, like the wind blows something in and, um, I know, like, because I wear contacts, I know for me, oh my gosh, it feels like maybe a plank just flew into my eye sometimes. Um, but can, I mean, it's like impossible to imagine like a whole piece, chunk of wood in your eye, you know? I know, right? That would just like, that would poke your eye out com- completely. And, and, even and I, a splinter of the piece of wood plank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess the point is um, how could you think that it would be okay to have that pain? In your eye, you know, and mm-hmm. think it's your your partner's fault. Why wouldn't you try to fix the plank or the speck or whatever in your own eye? Can, can you imagine just, <laughs> you know, I just had this thought, you know, what if we had some sort of a Hollywood version of this plank in your eye and you had some actor, had, had some sort of prosthesis that went right to the eye and it was a plank in his eye and it was a more of a literal uh, kind of a, a play or even ha- something like that. Um, just imagine the the slapstick kind of portion of this. It would be hilarious. But, you know, um, the other thing I want to, I want to share a story about some of the things I have gone through uh, just to, uh, I guess, being more real with you y'all. And um, so there were some, some relationships that I've had um, and I think one of the worst of them. I'll just I'll just go right to the to the top here with go it. Go for it. Um, the the relationship started out, you know, the the normal. Oh, is she pretty? She's cool, you know. And you know how guys talk about about the girls are like, oh, she's just really hot, and she's she's amazing. She's got a brain on her. She's uh, on her shoulders, and she. They just guys will just go on and on about the physical traits and rarely about the the inside of the of the woman. But once they find out about the inside, oh my, that that guy is just absolutely like head over heels. And so in this relationship, I think this was more of a uh, relationship that I got into because of the physical, but the thing that really bothered me the most was some of the things that came up as red flags. And when, when those red flags came up, I was like, Oh, and they were like stabbing me in the heart because I was, I was starting to fall for this person. And, uh, so some of those things that had, that were, that made me kind of go, Oh no, this is not cool. I want to change this. And, And there really wasn't a way to change it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but the, fact that they were their parents and down the generations were involved in certain groups that I, as a Christian, am completely against, um, made me think, well, hmm, maybe I can force this. And I tried to force it a little bit. And then 
You know, when you try to force something, the other side, the other partner just realizes there's there's just something wrong. And so eventually, you know, when you don't realize that that plank and uh, that plank is there, you don't want it to be there, but you don't really want to work on it either. And so the, the whole point of saying this little uh, opening up and telling you about this relationship, although very topical, it is to tell you that when you're you're trying to avoid the plank being there but you know God's saying hey that plank is still there no you rubbed in the wrong place it's the other eye hello <laughs> there you know it, that's what the holy spirit is trying to tell you and so getting that plank out of your eye work on your mindset work on the things that uh, would make you happy to meet you and then you're going to have you're going to have the ability to see the the speck just like Jesus said that speck in your your neighbor's eye and when you're able to help your neighbor out oh my word that is that is like gold because i think we're wired i think internally every single one of us we're wired to help each other but you know we get hurt we get uh unforgiveness in our heart and then we we start thinking oh no i can't help anymore because i got hurt and uh, th- that's quite often what really happens is we get hurt and there's no way in this green earth that we're going to ever help a single soul again because we got hurt. But we have to move on. We have to say, okay, I forgive you. You hurt me and well, you might hurt me again, but I forgive you. And we move on to the next day or the next hour or even the next minute and, and just move on in forgiveness because what is, what is it that uh, really hurts us the most? It's unforgiveness. And who does, that person, who does that unforgiveness hurt? It hurts us, not them. So realize, and, and I know you've probably heard this before, that the, the unforgiveness hurts you more than the other person. So it's probably just a way of saying, hey, you've got to start forgiving people. You've got to start forgiving the situations. Let the other people deal with that situation. You go on and and forgive. And forgiving doesn't mean trusting that person, at least not right away, or maybe not ever. Um, Because depending on the situation, you might have to forgive from afar if it's a really, really unhealthy Mm -hmm. situation. Um, If it's um, where you can still um, relate to that person or even still live with that person, yes, you must forgive and then work, build up, work on being able to trust again. Mm -hmm. Um, But forgiveness doesn't equate to trust. And I think that's an important um, thing to point out because so many people say, well, it's really hard to forgive or I tried to forgive. Um, But it's something really that, that we have to do with God. We have to have the Holy Spirit help us to forgive, especially if it's something that really hurt us. And so often the pers- people who are closest to us have the potential to hurt us the worst, the most. Mm-hmm. And so they know which buttons to push on, exactly. on you. Exactly. Yep. So um, we have to allow God into that space and, and follow his lead in that forgiveness. And then with him, decide when and how and what what would be appropriate in the form of trust again, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it's so important to build up your relationship with God, and forgiveness is a huge piece of that. If you have that hurt, it's like having that, that plank in your own eye still, mm-hmm. or a, a hurt in your heart. Um, you know, like, you know, picture like a wounded animal, like a sweet little animal that wouldn't hurt anything normally, but they're caught in a trap. And, and, um, normally they would be sweet, but because they have such pain that they're experiencing, they might snap at whoever is trying to help them out of that trap. And so just a little analogy there, that is one reason why forgiveness is so important. So we don't snap back at people. Mm -hmm. So we don't, have that hurt anymore. And God does such an amazing job. When we forgive someone and give that situation to him, he can heal it. He can even make it so what they did is more like a dim memory, but we don't feel that pain anymore. And that's so important. 
And so it's important to build your relationship with God. And in turn, as we do that, as we become more trusting of our Heavenly Father, and we trust that what He says is true and correct about us, uh, then we can start trusting Him about our relationship and, and asking Him, you know, can I trust this person? Um, you know, like even if you're wondering, I wonder what they're doing right now, you can ask God. And, he, you know, you, you know how He talks, right? If we have a peace... A peace that passes all understanding that's from God, right? Mm-hmm. And so what I'm trying to, to get to is the easier or the more we work on trusting God, in turn and eventually it becomes easier to trust our spouse. Yeah, that's really or, good. Our partner. Yeah. So if you, you can trust God, you can trust anything that is of God. And well, guess what? He created everything here on this earth. Mm-hmm. So we can trust each other. It makes complete sense. And and I think that's kind of an epiphany that we, we had. Like, if you trust God, mm-hmm. then why wouldn't you trust, trust uh, anything that God created? Because if you're asking God, what about this person? Or what about their motive? Or what, uh, what about this situation? He, he can tell you. And because he's the only one who can see our hearts. And he can see the motives of people and their innermost thoughts. And if there's something that is troublesome, he can let you know. And so, or if it's, it's, um, or if they're, you know, of, they share his heart, he can let you know that too. And so it's so much easier to be able to trust. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're trying to change your partner, know that there is very much a high possibility, probability that the plank is in your own eye. Um, and then, like, you know, Jess is saying, well, go to God and get an answer from God. And w- w- there's been many people who say, well, I-, I got an answer. And, well, the answer doesn't really match up with with my spouse or my partner or whatever. And so, you know, God never counter contradicts himself. And so if you're getting, if you're getting different answers then you need to go back to God. You need to go back until you get the same answer. And, you know, if you fully believe that you're getting the right answer, you need to just trust God. That's the whole point there. And and know that, you know, Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice. And where do we hear his, his voice? I, well, for me, I hear it in my spirit. Where's my spirit? It's in the belly of, of, uh, the belly area, mm-hmm. the belly area. Yeah. And that's, I was trying to think, uh, the river of, li- of living waters is in the belly. from the belly. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so know that if you are trying to listen to God and you have a, pro- if you think you're having a problem or an issue with, uh, maybe you have a, a plank in your belly that is blocking <laughs> the noise, the, the talking that God is trying to talk to you with. I don't know, but seriously, get in a quiet place and just start having a chat with God. He will talk to you and there will be something that just probably pops right into your head, right into your spirit, simultaneously even. And you'll go, well, where did that? I didn't think that. And then you realize, hey, God's talking to me. And, you know, if you are earnestly trying to get into, uh, you're trying to talk and have a conversation with God, that's what he wants. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to, um, he wants you to to be close and have a relationship with him, uh, because you know things are so much better when you have the relationship with God, and not with the world. Um, yeah, sure, you want uh, favor with man. You want favor with God too. So know that you are God's child. He is wanting to talk to you, and. He wants that plank to come out of your eye if, if you're at all trying to change anyone else. Know that the only way to change them is to change you first. Yeah, that's really, really helpful and really, really true. And, you know, whether or not God um, answers, when, whether you not, or not you feel like you hear the answer right away or not, don't worry about that. He might talk to you right away. Um, if you don't feel like you hear something right away, just give it to him. Leave that situation with him, but he will get you the answer. 
every time. Mm-hmm. So with that, we want to end this week's uh, podcast with a little uh, word from our sponsors. The sponsors would be us. We are continuing on the ebook. We want you to download that ebook if you haven't done so already. The ebook address is the the relationship revivalists.com forward slash seven secrets. It goes through seven secrets of having an explosive love experience with your relationship. And we highly, highly uh, want you to download it. Um, Don't know what else we can say other than you should go and get it now. (laughs) So with that, we will end. And we hope you have a wonderful and an amazing rest of your week. See you later.